Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? So today we're going to go through Titus. We're going to go through it backwards. And I'm going to start in chapter 3 because this ties into the testimony uh, the other day. And um, it's a perfect example of to confirm that particular situation of that testimony that I gave. And it confirms, in a lot of cases, where we've done things and we're like, I, I, I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I reacted that way to that person. I don't know why I responded that way because that's not my nature. You're right. Our nature is to attack and, and ridicule and, and diminish. God's nature isn't. And on those instances, that's God's nature coming out. And so that testimony, my friend in that testimony, was doing exactly what the Bible says to do. And it goes like this, Titus 3, graces of the heirs of grace. <clears throat> Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were once foolish, or sorry, were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. Why? Why should we be careful to maintain good works? This is a question a lot of people ask. What's the big deal with the good works? Because it reminds you of who you are. And it reminds you of who you're going to become. These things are good and profitable to men. But avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law for they are unprofitable and useless. Reject the device of man after the first and second admonition, knowing that such a person is warped and sinning, being self-condemned. When I send Artemis to you or Tychicus, uh, be diligent to come to me at Nicopolis, for I have decided to spend the winter there. Send Zenus, the lawyer, and Apollos on their journey with haste, that they may lack nothing. And let our people also learn to maintain good works, to meet urgent needs, that they may, be, they may not be unfruitful. All who are with me greet you. Greet those who love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. Now, Paul makes it very clear. Look, we used to be what we see other people being. But God has changed us. He has washed us. He's cleansed us. Let us deny the flesh and acknowledge the spirit. Let us walk in the things he has done in us. And let us not look away. Let us not deny the people around us the grace God has shown us. We used to do these things. We used to speak these things. We used to act this way. Let us not do that. I don't like Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And I, don't, I absolutely do not think that they are leaders, good leaders for this country. I don't think they're leaders at all. They don't, they don't hold those qualities. But they're still president and vice president. They still hold those titles. And they were put in that office by God. Why? I don't know. It's not for me to know. It's not for me to question God. He did it for a purpose. He did it for a reason. And so that's my president and vice president. I may not care for them. I may not like what they do. But I still, am, by, well, by God, I'm still required to pray for them. And pray that they don't destroy this country. Pray that we can, that they'll come to their senses and, and work in a way that will give us a peaceful life. See, God does those things to cause us to remember these scriptures right here that we just read today. It causes us to remember who we are. Funny enough, when leaders like this get into power, it causes the Christian to shine. See, when things are good, nobody sees the Christian. And a lot of times the Christian kind of falls into the background by because people quit listening to them or seeing them or because the Christian just gets quiet. It's easy now. 
When it gets hard, that's when the Christian rises up. That's when people seek out the Christian. That's when the true believer becomes very, very prominent. People are looking for truths. They're looking for answers. They don't understand what's happening. That's when we get to really set an example for the world. Now, this happens with people. We have opportunities all the time. Well, you don't understand what's happening in that person's life. It's probably a little arbitrary to, to react in such a negative way at first. Maybe see what's really going on first. And I've done this, and I've had people really, I can't believe you'd say that after what they've done. Yeah, well, what they did was terrible. What People do terrible things every day. <clears throat> but why did they do it? Is there some underlying issue that maybe needs to be dealt with? You have an opportunity to maybe bring them out and help them. People stop and think about those things. They stop and consider those things. We're the ones that, that are arbiters of that word, the word of God, to others. To help them see, to help them understand, to help them realize. So when my friend had this issue, she dealt with it in a godly manner. And what did God do? He blessed it. Now, that, that won't happen all the time. But the fact that it happened shows you that it's a good thing to conduct ourselves in such a manner. That's why I tell you guys, we're not to be a part of those protests. We're not to be a part of that. So we're not fighting for this world. We're fighting for the new one. The one that's coming. Our fight is different. And all those people that are out there, you know, acting crazy, doing the things that they're doing, putting up, like I was, somebody put up a, a, one of those uh, marquee signs with the orange lights that you see at the highway crossings and, and the cautions and construction. They put one up out in the middle of their field. We saw it last night. We were going into Lockhart. And they put it out in the middle of a field that says Joe sucks. Now, while that's funny that in the middle of the dark where there's no other lights, all you see is a bright orange Joe sucks. While that's funny, that's really not right. They really shouldn't do that. All the people sharing all the stuff, you know, F Joe Biden and stuff like that. That's not right too, especially for Christians to do. Those kinds of things can actually cause a leader to get more more to go more against the people. Now, I don't disagree with those people. I don't disagree with, with what they think. But I know it's not right for us to voice those kinds of things. And that, that goes for Russian leader Putin. That goes for anybody else that's doing the things that they're doing. You know, you call out what's wrong, but you still have to show a certain level of respect to the individual. They're, in, they're a leader for a reason. The stuff that's going on in Ukraine right now. A lot of people are really getting all fired up and getting led by the news media. Well, let me tell you something about that. There's two narratives being given. One on each side of the situation. And one wants you to hate one leader. One wants you to hate the other leader. But there's another narrative that's the reality of the situation. And I want you to consider something. From a tactical standpoint, you take over a nation by taking out the infrastructure, not the people. You take over a people by taking out the people, not the infrastructure. Both are happening in Ukraine. But it's not one individual doing both. I can't talk a lot about it because that kind of stuff gets shut down. But there's more going on than what you've been told. A whole lot more. And there's another agenda happening that hasn't been revealed to most people. This is where these situations come up where this kind of stuff applies. Don't be too quick to judge a leader by what he's doing. It may be a self-defense mechanism. See, if you have a big nation and it's hard to reach the inner parts of your nation, 
you want to make sure that no enemy is going to put their armament in the nation surrounding your nation. It's a defense mechanism. So what you do is you go to that nation. If they won't make an agreement with you, you go there. You take out their their utilities. You take out their supply chains. You take out their, their military movement that is a, a direct threat to you. And then you go in and say, I'm going to give you all these things back, but here's what I, what I want in return. And then you do that. And then everything's fine. When you go to take out a people, you start taking, you start going after, if, it's, you're, if your goal is just to overthrow that people, you take the people out. You don't take out the infrastructure because the infrastructure is irrelevant. So what's happening on the, on the outside that you see is not what's really happening in reality. Like I said, there's two agendas going on here and two different peoples are acting on this situation. Some of the things involved were with one guy. Some of the things involved were with another group of people. So be careful what you believe. Be careful where you send your money. Be careful what you get involved in or, or what you, you know, kind of chance or anything or, or IDs, ideals that you get tied up in or put your name on. Because not all is as it seems. I'm going to leave that there like that. But this is a great example of don't, don't be, uh, you know, be respectful of leaders because you don't know what's really happening. And it would take another, it would take a whole video that they wouldn't allow on here for me to explain in great detail what I'm talking about. But, um, yeah, there, there's more to this. So be careful. Be very careful what you listen to. All in all, what Titus 3 is telling us in many places of the Bible is when you have a leader, you respect what that leader says until it comes time that that leader goes outside what is legal, with outside what is right, <coughs> outside what is normal and what is uh, acceptable. Basically, outside what is godly. When they step outside of those bounds, then you say no. We have an example of this with Daniel. Hey, everybody at this point in time during the day, y'all are going to stop. You're going to face this direction. You're going to pray. And I'm going to have a statue there that you can see from all over the city. Daniel said no. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said no. We can't do that. We honor you in everything else, but we can't do that. I told Daniel, don't pray, Daniel. You can't pray no more. Daniel said, no, I can't do that. So he went home, opened the east window, and prayed. Now, they respected the leaders. They did what they were told. They obeyed the laws like they were supposed to. These are examples for us referring to Titus 3. And when it came time for them to step outside of what was godly, what God expected them to do, they said, no, we can't do that. I have to serve my God above you. The same thing applies now. When it comes to the point where they put laws in place or mandates or whatever they're pretending is, is, exists out there, which none of it has to this point so far, they're, they're going outside of what is their legal right as a leader to do. And that's when you say, no, I'm not going to partake in that. But you have to look at the situation and judge the situation. What's my best course of action here? And God will justify you in those things because he knows what you're going to go through. He knows the position that you're in. Same thing applies to situations where we're dealing with individual people, where we're dealing with fellow Christians. I have another subscriber right now asking advice uh, because of their church, lovely church. Everything's going good. Everybody's wonderful there. They're very close and tight knit. They have somebody new that has come in and started to give them um, visualization practices. That's witchcraft. How, how is that witchcraft? Freemoneyspells.com. If you go look up what they're about, it's all about visualization. Casting spells to get more money. You visualize you receiving the money. What that person is doing is witchcraft. Trying to force God to do what they want. That's not godly. That's not biblical. But this person is a leader in the church. What do you do? When it goes outside of what's biblical, when it goes outside of what's godly, what God has mandated, you have to stop it. Say, no, I can't do that. 
I'm currently counseling this person on what to do. I, I'm going to send them some links and some articles uh, of things that they can use. But this happens everywhere. I had to leave my last church because of dictatorship. A church isn't run by an individual or even two individuals. A church is run by an eldership, a council. That's how it's always been. We have an example of this in the book of Acts. We just went through it. The elders came to Paul. Paul. Paul's an apostle. He's over them. The elders came to Paul. Paul, we want you to do this. What did Paul do? He did it. Because the elders were running the show. Even though Paul was an apostle, he did it. And there was no cursing involved in it. God blessed him. But what they told him was a godly thing. If they'd have said something to him that was ungodly or went outside what God expects, Paul would have let him hear about it. In fact, there's an instance of that in the book of Acts. No, that's not what we're doing. He spoke against Peter on it. On what Peter was doing. Peter, you know that's not right. Why are you doing that? And several others. We know what the right thing is to do. Let us do the right thing. And let us do it in a godly way, in a respectful way, in a peaceful way, as much as is as within us to do so. And God will take care of the rest. Let us not miss those opportunities to be able to be a blessing to everyone around us as much as possible. And if you can't, you can't. If it gets to a situation where it's like, there's no way I'm going to be able to make this situation work out, walk away. You have the power to walk away. You have the ability to say no. And God knows. He knows what's going on. Especially when you get him involved in it. Lord, what do I do in this situation? I don't see a way out. I don't see a plus to this. How do I, how do I fix this? I'm in that boat on several situations. Still waiting on answers. But I work within what I'm allowed to do as it pertains to respecting those individuals, as being elders uh, over me. But I know when it's time to say no, because I know when it's something that's not right. And that's what I do. No, that's not right. I'm not willing to do that with you. And it may make them mad, it may upset them, they may not like to be around me because of that. I may be called an ass because of that. You're being a real jerk. You know, you're being real obstinate about this. No, I know what right and wrong is, and I'm going to do what's right. Just because I won't do what you want to do, which is wrong, doesn't mean that I'm being a jerk. It just means I'm being very confident and very forward in this is what's right, and this is what I'm going to do. You have no control over that. It's about manipulation. That's what people want. You can't let them do that. You know the truth. Tell them. And when they get mad, you can get mad all you want. I know what the truth is. I know what the right thing to do is. That's what I'm going to do. You want to do whatever you want to do? Go for it. You're an adult. Make your own decisions. But I know what the right thing is to do. And that's what I'm going to do. And they have no power against it. They have no authority against it. Because you stand in confidence. And they'll call you names. I've been called every name there is. There is no name I haven't been called. No one can come up with any new name. And it's so funny when they try, and I just tell them, that's great. That's exactly what I heard in high school. What can you do this better? Because I've heard it all. It, it's irrelevant. It means nothing. Because that is their defense mechanism when they know they're wrong and refuse to admit it. Walk in the grace of God. Act in the grace of God. Present yourself in the grace of God. Watch how people change. Some people will show their true colors. Right to your face. And you'll know what to do. You'll know how to respond. You'll know what the right thing is to say. Because God will bring it to, to your recollection. And the Holy Spirit will remind you of the scriptures. And you tell it to them. It won't be accepted very often. I can tell you that from experience. <laughs> but it's still the right thing to do. So let us always do the right thing to do. What does the Bible tell us to do in these situations? And let us act on that. And there's some gray area. There's some areas where it's kind of muddled and you're not really sure. That's where you pray. Lord, show me the right thing to do in this situation. And he will. 
every time. But always be ready to be used by him. It's a good thing. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory. To lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. To glorify you. To be a blessing to you. To bless you. To, to bless others. To walk in the light. Walk in truth as much as we possibly can. Father, we know we can't do it perfect. But we desire to do it as perfectly as we can. This world, in all of its nuances and all of its little intricacies, it's hard to do it exactly a certain way. It's hard to, to know exactly what the right thing is to do in some situations. And sometimes it's just like, I'm just going to walk away because there's I don't know of anything I can do right here. Well, you know the right thing to do in every situation. When to show grace and when to show uh, leadership. When to show mercy and when to say, I'm finished with you and turn around and walk away from them. When to show respect and when to say, no, that's outside of what your jurisdiction allows you to do. And as a godly person, I can't do that. We have examples in the Bible all over of these things. You've never ceased to leave us an example. So we thank you for this word that has examples in it about the exact things we're going through right now and how we're to react to them. And we see the whole world react the way it is. Earth dwellers fighting for the earth, trying to save the earth when this earth is passing away. So let us instead of being earth dwellers be heaven dwellers, fighting for heaven, for the new world, for the new heaven, for what's coming after. And let us fight for you and for your truths and for what's right. And when the time comes that we have to stand up for what's right, make us to do it boldly and to do it properly and to do it in a godly, graceful manner, thereby having us exude the grace you have shown us and the mercy you have shown us, but also giving the truth to them that you have shown us so that they will know, so that no man will be without excuse. And we have example after example, Old and New Testament, of that happening. We just went through Acts and how Paul addressed the leaders. Those leaders may not have been good leaders. They may not have been right. They were ungodly. But Paul showed a great deal of respect for them because that's what we're called to do. And I pray, Father, that you help us understand that today. We may not like what our leadership does. We may hate our leadership because they're just animals. But they're still leaders and they're there for a reason. They're not in office outside of your knowledge and control. And you control what they do, whether they realize it or not. So make us to understand your word concerning these things and to know what, what the right thing is to do when the right thing is to do. Know that it is impossible for us to be exactly right on everything, but we can go to the word and know the right response to these things. And the response is show respect, show grace, show mercy. Make us to be godly and to exude that godliness that you've shown us. Thereby becoming heirs of the kingdom. Thereby becoming children of God. Where the kingdom rises in our hearts. Jesus said, it doesn't come with observation. It rises in your hearts. I under, I'm starting to understand what that means. That as we grow and learn, we become those things inside and it overpowers the flesh. Father, help us understand this more. Help us grasp onto this more. Help us walk further into this and become better. Become more like what your will wants for us so that we glorify you in everything we do. I'm imperfect. I'm very imperfect. But my desire is to be that way. And I'm always looking for ways that I can change fighting with myself, wrestling with my flesh to do the right thing when my flesh wants to do the wrong thing. Father, help me win that fight every time because then you get glorified. In the life that I live, the, the regular everyday things that I do, I glorify God in them. Whether you eat, eat or drink or whatever you do, glorify God in all things. Beautiful verse. Father, help us to do that today that you get the glory. And then others get to see you in us. Or maybe turn, maybe change, maybe become saved. 
They've demonized Christianity today so badly. And a lot of it is because of our church leaders that have done this. They've made this grave error in the way they've presented your word, the way they've presented Christianity. They're not Christians. They can't be. Father, help us, those that truly believe, help us to be those examples of what true believers are, true Christianity, being true people of the way. And every time they see us, may it bring to remembrance the scriptures they have heard, the verses they do know. And may it convict their hearts so that they will change. Make us to be those examples, Father, those examples of your mercy and grace and love. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for that free gift of salvation. Thank you for calling us children, for making us heirs, co-heirs with Christ. And thank you for making those things emanate from us, those qualities that you have. So that people may look at us and see the faces of angels like Stephen. They may see the qualities of God in us. I don't know how close we can get. I don't know how close I can get. But I know you can bring us as close as possible. And help us overcome the flesh and overcome this world. Make us overcomers, Father. We thank you for that in advance. In Jesus' mighty name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in his mighty, glorious name, we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for daily prayer. It is so vitally important that we remember the word of God and remember what he says. That we are always reading in it and looking and thinking about it. What does, how does this apply to what I'm doing? Where can I express this concept in my life to another? And may we pray on those things in our individual lives and in our individual circumstances and ask God to show us the right way in that moment and in those situations to act accordingly, to act appropriately, to act in a way that is godly. Because that gives him the glory. And it shows the kingdom rising in our hearts. I love you guys very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you guys in the next video.